Hello, my name is Stefan. I am a PM on the Remote Desktop Services team. And this video is continuation in the series of videos about troubleshooting MSX Hypertouch. In the previous video, where we ended up being was we have the path, we are able to successfully authenticate the path, meaning we don't have a permission issues, we don't give a get an error around how we can access the path from our session hosts but we still got that uh, and we still were blocked we were not able to continue because we got an error saying there was an untrusted signature and here is the particular error that we were getting hopefully you can see it fine the error states app contains untrusted signature and just for the sake of having everything covered, let's go and do it from the start. So I'm gonna, I'm here in my host pool in the WVD blade. I have healthy session hosts. I am in the MSX packages tab. I'm gonna click add. This is one who's gonna open the dialog for uh, asking me where is my path. So I'm going to specify the path. It's directly to the MSX image, to the VHD connecting the MSX application. Here, what is happening right now is the portal is talking to the account, uh, is talking to the storage, it's talking to the session host, and it's trying to figure out what is going on with that package. Is it valid or not? And the error says you have, like you're missing something. This particular error, indicates there's something wrong with uh, the signature of the application. So every MSX application must be digitally signed. It's mandatory. There's no ifs and buts about it. Why? Security, ransomware, all that good stuff. And we are inheriting all this in MSX Appetach. We are not gonna allow you to deliver an application that is not trusted, that is not digitally signed. Since I have uh, signed the edge with my own certificate, I have to make sure that my own certificate is on these machines. And really quickly, I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. So we're going to go jump on the main controller. We'll use that as our jump box to access the two session host pools that we have in this uh, host like this, two session hosts that we have in this host pool. And on each of them, we're going to install the certificate. So let's go ahead and do that. And here are the two session hosts. Okay. On the domain controller, I'm going to go and attempt to connect to my two session hosts. So stgeorgi 1030-1, so that's one of them. And you get the dubious pleasure of trying to see if I enter my password correctly. Okay, so this is the one, and now let's do the zero. Now, if you are doing this in your production environment, you will want to use publicly signed certificates. You don't want to be doing this manually once the session hosts have been provisioned. If you do end up using your own non-publicly trusted certificate, you have to make sure it's part of the master image. You don't want to be doing this in a repeatable fashion across 10, 20 machines. Even two is too much, right? Uh, but for sake of this demo, for sake of learning, we're going to do it manually. Okay, so I'm connecting to the machine. While this is connecting, I'm going to quickly pause and grab my cert from my repository. Okay, so obtained. I'm going to just paste it over here. And since we have two machines, obviously I will need to do it on the other. Okay, wrong machine. That is why you don't do this process manually. Okay, so something on the machine, you're like, yeah, I'm done. Nope. We just got it to the machine, we need to install it. Going to right click, install certificate, local machine. This needs to be applicable for all users. 
Next. Now, we have to place it in a special location. Why? Because that's how it has been designed. It needs to go in trusted people. And you can argue with me. Well, if it's in the root, it will also work. Guess what? Go try it. If it doesn't work, put it in trusted people and move on. Next. Finish. Great. This was one. So let's, I'm just going to close it. And I'm going to go do zero. Same thing, right? Right click. Install certificates. Local machine. Place in a specific place. Trusted people. Okay, done. Now, we go back into the UI and we are magically unblocked. Let's see that. Okay, back in the UI. Same host pool, same session hosts, MSX packages. Zero so far. We're still trying to add our first package. And right, we're going to click Add. And here you'll be like, oops, I don't know the path on top of my head. Well, luckily, I have it. If you don't, please reference the previous video, which was about troubleshooting permissions. And really quickly, just because I have a tab open, right, you don't worry about the access keys. Those will be invalid by the time I publish this video. And here, you're going to go into Overview, File Share. Make sure that you click Properties here. Take this path, turn it into an SMB path, which you will be replace this with a backward slash, backward slash, append the file. Exactly what I have here. Gonna click away from the uh, window, and what this you gonna see that suddenly magically, almost magically, um, what's gonna ha what had happened is that the portal through the broker have token to the RD agent. The RD agent using the path that we provided have reached to the MSX package. No, sorry. Yeah, to the MSX package that is somewhere on the share. Had wallet that MSX package has parsed it, verified it was correct. Like properly, we, it's real MSX package was digitally signed, right? Certificate, so that good stuff. And now it's saying, what do you want to have for display name? Just in case. I'm going to say, well, I'm not going to say test, I'm going to say edge. And I'm going to click add. And we are done. We have added our first package. Now, pay attention. The package is inactive. It will not show up on my host pools until I come here and make the package active. Okay? With that, we have seen how to troubleshoot certificate issues. Well, not really troubleshoot, but how to set up the certificate so we get past the issue when the certificate is not on the machine. With that said, uh, this will be the end of the second video in this series on troubleshooting, which the first one was about permissions, the second one was about certificate, and I'll publish a few more on the other facets of troubleshooting MSX Thank you.